Nanotechnology is a world where the individual atoms start to matter. So we're talking about controlling stuff on a scale that's much smaller than you can see. It's smaller than the wavelength of light, smaller than you can see with any ordinary microscope. It's also a length scale on which the very laws of physics themselves start to change. The London Centre for Nanotechnology was created between two leading research universities and the idea was to bring together communities from different fields in order to share a common interest in nanoscience and nanotechnology. The reason we set up the London Centre for Nanotechnology was first to provide access to the tools that you need to be able to do this kind of work. Secondly, we needed to bring together those people. You don't just need physicists to do this kind of work, you need engineers, material scientists, chemists, biologists, medics. It's only that way that you get to harness the full power of these techniques. What the London Centre for Nanotechnology has achieved is to catalyse the collaboration between experimentalists on the one hand and theorists, those engaged in computational simulation. On the other, they share the same space, they sit in adjacent offices, their students collaborate and, and interact. Here in this lab, we study materials, the physical properties of materials, at macroscopic scales, big scales, and also at the nano scale. What we're looking for are new materials that show interesting electronic, magnetic, but also optical properties. I work on molecular materials, the type of materials that are used in photosynthesis. Our work is really would not have been possible without this large interdisciplinary team that we've got at the LCN. So our, We've been working with theorists, with device experts, also with characterization experts. In this lab, we work on quantum technologies. And specifically what we do is we take single electrons, we put them in a very small box and we make them do tricks. The end goal would be to make um, a quantum computer. We're really good now to make this one box or maybe two boxes um, and, and manipulate the electrons and the electrons spin. Now we want to make networks to build on this and to do some real computation. If we can manipulate molecules one at a time and probe the optical or electrical characteristics of these particular molecules, we have the ability to look forward and develop the appropriate tools where we can think about designing drugs, for example, in terms of diagnostics, which you couldn't do with uh, more conventional strategies. Uh, this is the, the science of the small. One of the applications and the outcomes of uh, being able to manipulate these nanoscale systems is that we develop tools to study biological systems much more accurately and generally the, the origins of life, if you wish. So there's a lot of exciting, uh, exciting work uh, coming up in the future. We use scanning tunnel microscopy not only as a technique to image surfaces at the atomic scale, but also to manipulate the individual atoms and molecules on the surfaces to form small nanostructures. And then we can also uh, use the, the microscope to measure the properties of the individual nanostructures. The reason that we're creating these nanostructures is because we're trying to investigate uh, ways in which we can build nanoscale devices where really the individual components are constructed out of individual atoms. A lot of the work that we have done relates to understanding water and ice. And even though wa liquid water is ubiquitous, we still don't have a clear understanding about how it behaves at the nanoscale. And we have managed, by using massive supercomputers, to get better insight about how liquid water freezes, how water interacts with surfaces and, and other materials. One of the biggest achievements to come out of this lab was the first visualization of the DNA double helix in liquid. One of the really exciting things about seeing the double helix in liquid is we can study how it varies and evolves over time as other things bind to it or just as it changes. In the future, we'd like to use this ability to study DNA double helix structure as DNA binds to novel therapeutics such as anti-cancer drugs. We're designing biomaterials. So those are materials that can be implanted into the body to help the body to repair itself and also materials that can change colour and tell us about early disease detection. Some of the things we're really excited about are designing materials that can interact even more closely with the body so that when we put them in they give loads and loads of information to the cells in the body so they can make the best sort of tissue repair possible. As our technology gets smaller and smaller, eventually the rules of operation change from the familiar rules that operate on a human scale to the rather stranger rules of quantum mechanics. 
For example, a few years ago I was working on a problem with a string theory colleague where we were trying to understand the behavior of a particular type of unusual crystal. And these crystals, when you put a battery across these crystals and measure the current, the current changes slightly, it vibrates in time, and it turns out that that's mathematically equivalent to the string theory of black holes, and I find that quite remarkable. The past 10 years for the London Centre for Nanotechnology have been fantastically exciting. We've seen a wide range of new science and new technology develop. But in the coming 10 years, we're looking forward to even more collaboration, and in particular, the integration to create whole systems which develop functionalities of real use to society. The LCN has become the heart of a really exciting interdisciplinary community. I think that community is going to become larger, and the role that our tools are playing in the development of science is going to become even more central. It's going to be a really exciting next 10 years.